In the previous lecture, we discussed the Compton effect, which is basically an increase in wavelength that takes place as a result of the collision between photons and electrons. So let's look at the following example that is a direct application of the Compton effect. So x-rays with a wavelength of 0.100 nanometers are directed at a carbon source that contains electrons and those x-rays scatter at various angles. So we want to calculate the wavelength of the scattered x-rays if the scattered angle is a 0 degrees, B 45 degrees, C 90 degrees, and D 180 degrees. So let's begin with part A. So to calculate the Compton shift, the change in our wavelength, we have to use the following equation which we discussed in the previous lecture. So the increase in our wavelength is equal to H divided by the mass of our electron multiplied by the speed of light multiplied by 1 minus cosine of the angle phi, where the angle phi is the angle between the horizontal axis and the scattered x-ray. So H is simply Planck's constant. This is the mass of our electron and C is the speed of light. So if we plug those values, we get 2.43 times 10 to negative 3 nanometers. Now we plug in an angle of 0 for this phi angle and 1 minus cosine of 0 is 1 minus 1 and that gives us 0. So this quantity is 0 and 0 multiplied by this gives us 0 nanometers. So that basically means when our incident x-ray, when the incident photon collides with the electron and continues moving along the same horizontal pathway as shown in part A, there's basically no interaction taking place between the photon and the electron and that means there is no change in wavelength, there is no change in frequency and there is no change in energy that takes place. The energy that the photon had before the collision is equal to the energy the photon had after the collision. So it's as if the photon is invisible to the electron. So once again, the fact that the change in wavelength is equal to zero implies that when the photon goes directly straight through the electron at an angle of zero, no change in frequency takes place. Now, since there is no change in frequency, and frequency depends on the energy of the photon, the energy of the photon remains constant, and the photon does not actually interact with that electron. Now, let's move on to part B. In part B, we basically want to apply the same exact equation. So we want to calculate the change in wavelength when that collision takes place. But now, the angle is 45 degrees as shown in part B. So we have this quantity multiplied by 1 minus cosine of 45 and that gives us about 0 0.001 nanometers. So this is the change or the shift in wavelength that takes place when that collision between the photon and electron takes place. So to find the wavelength of the scattered x-ray in part B, we take this quantity and add it to 0 0.100 nanometers and we get 0 0.101 nanometers. Now let's move on to part C. In part C, once again, we want to apply the same exact equation, but now our angle phi between the scattered x-ray and the horizontal is 90 degrees as shown by this arrow. So we plug in 90 and we have 1 minus cosine of 90 multiplied by this and that gives us about 
0.002 nanometers. Now we take this and add it to 0.1 nanometers and we get this quantity. And finally, we move on to part D. So now what's taking place is the photon is traveling, collides with the electron within the carbon source and bounces right back and travels in the opposite direction along the x-axis. So in such a case, what exactly is the change in wavelength that is taking place? So we apply the same equation, we calculate, plug in an angle of 180 and cosine of 180 gives us negative 1. So 1 minus negative 1 gives us 1 plus 1, so that's 2. 2 multiplied by this gives us about 0.005 nanometers. And we take that and add it to 0.1 nanometers and we see that the wavelength of the scattered x-ray, the scatter photon, is 0.105 nanometers and this basically means backward scattering is taking place. The photon is bouncing and traveling in the opposite direction along the same pathway that it was coming in. Now, notice that when the angle is 180 between the horizontal axis and the scattered photon, that represents the maximum quantity of the change in wavelength.